and welcome to our daily word today. It's Friday. We have reached the end of another week together, and I'm glad that you've chosen to join me. As always, carve out some time to be with me as we share in our continued journey through the daily word <clears throat> and for our continued conversation about what it means to live in the way that God would call us to through scripture and the ongoing conversation about that. So um, today is daily word number 789 as we continue our long journey together. So I've chosen for our scripture from the book of Numbers chapter 20 verses 1 through 5. So the Israelites have made their way out of captivity, out of Egypt, are heading toward the promised land, and of course the inevitable happens for them. They get thirsty. And so they begin to grumble a bit about why they're in this condition that they're in. And so we hear these words. The Israelites came into the wilderness of Zin. Now there was no water for the people. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Why have you brought the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness for us and our livestock to die here? Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to bring us to this wretched place? So we go back to our conversation a bit about water. And of course, for the Israelites, and we understand it, it is this life-giving thing that they need for themselves, their children, their grandchildren, and of course, their livestock. Water is this gift of life that they need. But it's interesting how they approach this conversation with Moses and Aaron about no water. They don't say, where can we find water? They don't say, how can we source enough water for our people and our livestock? They ask, why are we here? The question of purpose overtakes the need for outcomes. Their desperation for meaning and for action shows up as a question of meaning. And why? Why can be such a discouraging question, can it? The kind of question that, at least for me, and probably for you, this spins relentlessly around and around and around and around. Why? Why me? Why now? Why here? Why in this moment? Why did this happen to me? Why is this continuing to happen to me? We, we all experience that, right? It can be that kind of re relentless question that consumes the soul. But it also, I think, can invite us to some invigorating soul searching about where we are in our life. Because you know why? It's rarely a neutral question. Even the innocent curiosity of why can lend itself to judgment. Why is a question that we can be lost or found, drawn close or cast into the wild? Now, it's interesting in this text, in this scripture, that God doesn't answer the people's why. And neither does Moses and neither does Aaron. Instead, the unasked question of how is simply answered when Moses strikes the rock and water pours out of it. The action of how draws the people into some kind of holy relief. The how demonstrates God's why for them and for us. Their why is never answered, is it? It's not. But in God's way, they find comfort. And I think it's true for us. Whether it's about water or all the other circumstances in our life, the most compelling question 
is why. You know, for my grandkids, you know, the ones who are old enough to talk, why is a big word for them. Why, Papa? Why this? Why is that car there? Why is that truck there? Why is that house blue? Why is it going to rain? I mean, you've probably experienced that. The list goes on and on. And we try to answer them, but the why is just continue to compound themselves and we get sometimes a little frustrated with that. It's probably true of that in life for us. Why, they said to Moses, did you bring us here essentially to die? Why are we in this wretched place? And in the midst of their desperation, Moses strikes a rock, water comes out, and their lives are changed again. And it's true for us. I think for us, we have to have the courage to look for the why in the midst of our difficult whys. Look for the how in the midst of our difficult whys. Look for the ways that God moves and sustains us in all of our lives and challenges us to live our lives in such ways that we know God will provide for us. Went to the funeral home this morning for my friend Pat and stood in line just a few minutes and I finally got to his wife and she gave me a hug and she said, oh Jim, Pat just loved you. And she said, he would often say when he came home from breakfast, Jim said, and I'm like, I'm not sure that's a great thing. She said, oh no, Pat loved you. And it was such a fun conversation to have. He was very ill. And the question of why might have surrounded them, but God was present with them and as I had the conversations with them. And I got back here to my office and I thought, wow, that's why I went there today. Because somehow God moves in us and answers our whys with the hows. And for me, the how, the answer, the water, of striking the rock was, oh, Jim, Pat loved you. That's how God moves in us, and that's what God wants for us. So I hope that, you know, for us, when we have, the, when we have it in us to ask why, and we all do, that we'll look for God in the midst of that, knowing that God will provide. So that's our word for today. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being with me always as we share our lives together. Join us Sunday morning. It's World Communion Sunday. And we're going to share the bread and the cup together. So I hope you join us at 1015, either here on Facebook Live or join us together in person. Have a great day and a great weekend. Know of God's love and know of my love.